Hey everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you three of the most underrated and probably least talked about features of the Electron Syntact, including how to convert an internal synth sequence to a sequence that can control external hardware with just a couple of button presses. We'll also talk about a sort of hidden synth engine that nobody's really talking about with the Syntact that's actually really fantastic. And we'll talk about playing external hardware live using the Syntax new keyboard mode. All this while featuring the different ways that the Syntax plays well with external gear like the EOWAVE Quantrated Swarm and the Moog Minotaur, which we'll be using today. So here we go. All right, so we have the Syntax and the Quadranted Swarm connected here. So we have the MIDI coming in from the Syntax into the MIDI in of the Quadranted Swarm. And we have the main out from the Swarm going into the right input of the Syntax. And so that way, over here on the mixer page, we can have uh, add some delay, reverb, we can send it to the effects if we want, and that's all coming the audio that's coming from the swarm into the syntax. Other than that, everything else that uh, you'll hear is coming from inside the syntax for right now, and uh, we'll show how these things kind of work together. So we've got a little bit of a kick going here, coming from one of the analog kick engines from the syntax. Um, we've got an offbeat hi-hat as well coming from the cymbal engine. And then over here on track one, we have a little bit of a kind of a bass lead. Now, interestingly enough, that sound, um, I was trying to mess around with some of the internal engines in the Syntax and try and see what sounds that I can get from it. And this is one of my new favorite sounds, which at the beginning was probably my least favorite of all of the uh, machines that are inside of this. And that is the uh, chord machine. And what's interesting about this is that the chord machine, I was at first using it just as chords. And then I realized that when you dial it down to the bottom couple different things, once you get down below minor, you have different unison modes. So two, three, and four voice unison modes. So putting this on unison mode gives you a bunch of layers of the exact same sound rather than doing a chord. So different octaves of that same sound. And what's really cool is playing with the wave shape on this. While we play, you'll be able to hear how the the wavetable synth works with this unison mode and actually make some really cool sounds. So anyway, using that with uh, that cool version of the chord engine um, with the kick and hat, sounds a bit like this. And then over here on track seven, we have this set up as a MIDI track. And when it's set up as a MIDI track, we send it out on whatever channel we want to send to the device. This one's on channel 16 right now. And so that way, everything that we sequence on track seven is going to be sent out to whatever device we have connected via MIDI on this. So that would sound a bit like this. <laughs> which is tons of fun um, when you have things that are less easy to sequence, or this only has an eight step sequencer and we can do multiple steps here. We can do trig conditions. We can um, sequence all sorts of different things on the syntax and send those over to the swarm in order to get a bit more out of this than we would get out of it on our own. And as I was building this 
track up. I wanted a little bit of a kind of a rolling bass line in the background. And I put this on track number five here. And I was thinking, yeah, that's fine and good, but it doesn't sound that great with everything else if you listen to it here. And I was thinking, you know, I would love to have something that is a little bit more of a kind of classic um, analog bass sound that goes along with this rather than this sound that I just kind of quickly threw together. But it was enough for me to kind of try it out within the syntax and figure out that I wanted to have that rhythm and those notes in something here. <laughs> but I didn't particularly want that sound. One of the coolest things about this intact is that any of these uh, machines can be any of the digital or analog machines and they can all, any of the 12 can be a MIDI machine. And so what's great about that is that if I decide that I wanna bring in another piece of gear, like for example, the Moog Minotaur, so let's say we wanted to use that same pattern with the Moog Minotaur. All we need to do is connect the MIDI out. Uh, we split it with a through box so that we've got now MIDI going into both the Minotaur and the Swarm. Then we're gonna take the audio from the Minotaur and put it into the left input. So then when we go back to this, we've got the input left and right. So now we have both of these coming through this um, these effects here. And then the really cool part about this is if we just listen to the kick and that bass line. So on that channel, we have uh, the tone engine that's making that. If we go into select our machine and we just arrow down, the bottom choice is MIDI. So if we hit yes, now channel five is a MIDI channel. So if we hit play, we're only gonna hear the kick because this isn't being sent anywhere. So all we need to do is hit function and press this first encoder for channel. And then we're gonna select the channel, the MIDI channel that we wanna send on. Uh, the Minotaur's on 15. So then we're gonna select that. This was in that same sequence that we did with an internal synth engine now to an external synth and that audio is routed back in through the input. So let's hear what that sounds like. And now we can adjust the Minotaur. And now we can hear that in with what we have going on the swarm and we can adjust that while we play. And then we can also adjust the baseline that's on the Minotaur while we play. back to the channel where we have the swarm. We also have the option to use uh, CC values to use these knobs on the syntax to control different functions of the swarm. So if you'd rather be able to control using these knobs or have everything in one place, you can kind of create your own macro for what you want to control here. So you've got eight different options of what you can control. So in order to assign something, again, all you need to do is do function and press the encoder and that activates it and then you go to the amp page and you're going to select what cc number you want to send to that particular one so we have these first four here that are set to some different values for some of the different things one is now set to the lfo speed um, two is set to fold, which actually isn't even a function that's on here, but it's a function that you're allowed to do through CC only. 
Uh, value three is going to the attack and value four is going to the decay of the envelope. So now when we play this particular part, we can change the decay. We can change the attack. We can fold the wave. And we can adjust the speed of the LFO if we have that LFO connected to something. So it allows for a lot of control over external equipment. If you want to, like for example, with the swarm, the buttons are a little bit small. Sometimes it's hard to see exactly what they are. And if you want to control in here, a few of those functions, you can set up to eight parameters that you can use CC values to control those here in the, in the swarm or in any other MIDI device. So now if we put this all together with our bass coming from the Minotaur, our lead coming from the Swarm, our second bass line that is coming from internally in the Syntact, and then we have our kick and hat that are coming from inside the Syntact. how the Syntact plays well with others and can be connected to all sorts of different gear. And one of the really cool things about the Syntact is with 12 different channels, you've got four channels of analog synthesis, you've got eight channels of digital synthesis, but any one of those 12 can be converted into a MIDI track. So if, for example, you wanted to have the four analog tracks be analog, and four of the digital voices from within here, sequencing different things internally, you could sequence four pieces of external gear. If you wanted to use only four of the analog voices and sequence eight different pieces of gear, you can do that as well. If you only wanted to have the kick from coming within here and you wanted to sequence 11 other pieces of gear, you could do that as well. And so it's something that makes the Syntax really, really flexible where with the other machines like the Digtone, you had four synth tracks and four MIDI tracks. With the Digitact, you have eight sample tracks and eight MIDI tracks. And with the Syntact, you have 12 tracks that are all flexible. They can be anything you want. If you wanted, you could use none of the internal things and this could sequence 12 different pieces of external gear. They could all be sequenced through here and control those CC values, control through CC values, the functions on those synths from internally in the Syntact. So the MIDI functionality for controlling external gear, as well as using the chord engine in unison mode are for me, two of the most underutilized functions uh, that I've seen out there with the Syntact and two things that I really am starting to love about this machine. Another really cool feature with the Syntact is the keyboard fold. And you know, if you hold function and long press on the track, it takes you to the keyboard mode. You can decide what scale you want, what you want your root note to be, and then you can decide whether or not to fold the keyboard. So if you have the keyboard fold off, you get a chromatic keyboard that shows all of the notes of whatever scale you decide to go in. So as you change around the scale, it's gonna give you some different notes that you can play, right? Um, but if you do keyboard fold, what that does is instead of having one octave of your scale, you've got two octaves um, on one on the bottom row, one on the top row. So with this particular sound, and so all of those are in a C minor scale, the way that this is set up right now. And with what we've been talking about, about connecting external synths to this, if you have a synth, for example, like the Minotaur that doesn't have a keyboard, if we go to that channel and then we go to our keyboard fold, 
That is controlling the Minotaur now. And if we want some glide, So all of that right now is controlling the Minotaur, but if we just hit track and switch to seven, for example, that's the track that we have controlling the Swarm. So now that's controlling with two octaves of keyboard, we're controlling the Swarm, rather than having to use uh, the touch plates and only having one octave, and it's not exactly set to notes unless you coordinate it with the notes. So it can be really difficult to set this up to play as a keyboard, but using the syntact, we can just go right in, go to that MIDI channel, and now we can control this. And then if we want to control one of the internal synths, like for example, where we had our chord synth on track one here using the unison mode. And we can go in and mess with this while we play. So there you have it three of the most underrated and least talked about features of the Electron Syntax. And if you like this type of content, there's three ways that you can support the channel. Down below this video, there is a link to my Patreon. There's also an affiliate link to a listing to all of the gear that I use over at Perfect Circuit. And of course, liking and commenting on the video excites the algorithm and pushes this video out to a few more people. Thanks so much for choosing to spend a little time with me today, and I hope to see you in the next video. In the meantime, take care of each other.